Okay. Hello, Greg. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Uh, you are on uh, mute, so. I'm, I'm off mute now, so that's cool. <laughs> yes, I worked that out. I'm uh, um, just, I need to just do this one quickly. I'll come and talk to you in a moment. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, doing seven things all at the same time, which is a normal day. <laughs> And hello, Jody, and hello, Iggy Han. Good afternoon. Good night. <laughs> We're just getting things set up. No worries. We are so happy that you are so excited to, uh, to join us, that you're coming in so early. <laughs> I'm only a few minutes early, aren't I? Uh, I uh, yeah I don't know. yeah um can you see this I've lost you actually do something last year with the um the, the i'm just going to close this door i'm sorry there's another door that was open did you do something with the um the pitch fest last year or i've seen you somewhere along the way already the, the one minute pitch we did ah yeah, yes 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 so that was enough to get you to uh, want to come and do more of it which is good we loved, oh, I didn't do anything, but Jodie loved <laughs> pitching. <laughs> oh, that's very well, good. So, well, so you know how, <laughs> the roles are well defined then. Yes, yes. Jodie does the stuff and I don't. <laughs> Alison writes it, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. Well, we all have got a role to play. That's the important bit. So, um, and it's good that you have more people that can do things than, because most companies are um you know sole sole entrepreneurs and that doesn't help much uh, because you can't do it all yourself rob can you hear us you're on mute at the moment i see you're off mute <laughs> hello rob Yes, I can hear you. I just don't know if the mic works. It does. Well done. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that as um, an innovation award, technology is the one thing that um, webinars and microphones and video cameras is the one thing we're quite scared of, uh, thinking that it's not going to work? I'd borrowed this headset from someone else, so it's its first run in real life. Oh, okay. Well, you're doing well. You're doing very well. Um, Rob, what company are you from, if I may ask? Uh, I'm from the Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development. That's a company in its own, isn't it? Uh, that gives us, keeps us out of trouble, yes. <laughs> um, are you guys looking at um, entering or are you um, uh, looking at, well, we've got a We've got the roving couple. Um, <laughs> are you um, are you looking to enter, or are you look, are you looking to see who is entering? Uh, a little bit of both, actually. We we just haven't looked to see what's available, and if uh, there's a match with the, some of the uh, initiatives that we're undertaking. I'm sure there will be. Uh, if I haven't convinced you by the end of it, um, then I'm not doing my job. I think. That's good. We'll see how we go. Okay. There's some, um, we have changed quite a bit on the categories this year. So there's always a government category. Um, so that means that there is something that you can actually um, do, but there's, I think there's also opportunity for you to look at some of the other areas 
that is not just only um, government itself. So uh, yeah, it would be good. It's, it's good to see that, uh, you know, that the, the different government departments also, I think, um, follow some of the, the, the simple business uh, rules in life. You know, if we don't tell people Uh, if you see me wave, I'm not waving necessarily at everybody here. So it's just people leaving. Um, I'm currently running a project in Kunana um, in my not so spare time, and um, people are leaving. So uh, if you see me, you know, make some funny moves, just know I am friendly, but I'm also saying goodbye to people leaving. So, Jody, Jody you guys are in the car. Yes, yes, we are. Yeah. I love the office. <laughs> yeah, it's good air conditioning. <laughs> oh, the windows are down, are they? <laughs> True mobile solution. Yes, we've done a lot of these. <laughs> oh, there's so many lines I'm not going to touch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's a few more people. We had quite. We didn't have a massive group. This is the first. Um, briefing and it's normally uh we, well we in this is the second year that we started um or we opened up the entries earlier on uh what is really good to see is that we already have a number of entries we, and i've seen your frog bonds you are in there i think yes i noticed that when i was looking um at some of the information in there so it's really good to see that people are out there and they're doing it so um um and but this is normally the one which people where people you know they're still thinking um it's the end of the year so we don't have a massive crowd but we still have a few people coming in so people also know that it will be recorded so um um i think on when the clock goes 403 i will make a start okay. and then uh, greg i can't see when people join in if you would sort of just either wave or something so we can just let me know when I should stop talking. Okay. Uh, because talking is the one thing I do quite naturally, apparently. So um, you have to interrupt me if you want to get, if you want to uh, have a say as well. So it's 4.03. So um, I would uh, like to take the opportunity to say welcome to the Frockbond ladies and uh, Rob. And as always, uh, oops, thank you, uh, Greg, for um, helping and making sure that the technology does not actually uh, uh, let us, um, you know, uh, go astray. Uh, we're also recording this webinar, so you can go back to it at a later, at a later stage. If you have any questions um, at any stage, um, feel you will contact myself um, and we'll, we'll run it through it. So this is, as I said, the first submission briefing for the 29th uh, Lateral Insight Awards and I'll get into the name in a little bit. But my name is Celia Jordan. I'm the Chief Judge. Um, this is the fourth year now, I think, that I've been Chief Judge. Uh, but it's really exciting to see the innovation that is happening in WA and, and the, the whole management committee and the group of judges that we have. We're all so excited to see um, the Inside Awards continue. Um, so in 29 years, it's a very rich history. So what we will do, and I don't, I don't want to keep you, you know, until um, infinity, is I will run through a bit of an introduction, which I've probably done. Um, it's always a good opportunity just to have a look back at what the 28th or the previous version looked like. Um, we'll share some inf import, important information with you. We'll also talk about why enter, because it still is um, a, a process where you have to go and spend time to um, fill in some questions, think about how you set yourself apart. Um, and um, the wise thing is to actually do it, leave it and finish it up, as opposed to most people leave it and then um, try and finish up the night before or the week before. 
um, we'll run through the, the awards categories. We've actually done quite a bit of work this year again, because we, as, as an, um, you know, when the moment when we talk about innovation awards, we also have to make sure that, that we remain relevant because we're showcasing um, innovation in WA and, and, and we have to make sure that we keep, we keep ahead of the pack. Um, we'll talk a bit about what it means to actually enter the Inside Awards and what pathways it's open. I'm going to take you through how to enter, but it's not a complicated process. Um, and then we're actually going to think beyond just being the first finalist um, and sort of working out what happens after that. So that's the, the main key of it. Um, if you have questions, feel free, just to but put up your hand and we will um, run with it as we go. So it is quite important, I think, just to stop and think about why we're doing what we're doing. The Inside Awards, the Lateral Inside Awards, is a volunteer organisation. So people like Greg and myself, we do it really for the love and the passion of it. Um, and But it is an organisation, if you think about it, that it has been a volunteer organisation. It's the 29th year. Um, and there are a few people that actually, when it started, like someone like a Jim Ellis is still around. Um, Bruce, who, you know, who's the chair of the, um, the judge. People that are really passionate to make sure that um, uh, the that the industry that we recognize here in WA there isn't always that much of an opportunity, but it's always quite amazing at the end of the year when we get to the, you know, even with the finalists, but really when we get to the gala event or the event where we announce the, the WA winners and merit award winners to see the caliber um, and to see the exciting things that are happening within um, WA. So the purpose is that we promote and recognize excellence um, and do that is through the Inside Awards. So, as I said, my name is Celia Yordan. I've, I've been the chief judge now for four years, and I've certainly seen some really interesting um, and passionate people come through the door. Housekeeping, um, there's not much housekeeping because unless we all have an emergency where we are. Um, but I think if you have any questions, if you can't ask it, um, Craig will see the, um, uh, he will see the comments coming up. Um, and um, he, he, sorry, I'm just trying to uh, avoid a conversation. Comments come up and then we'll deal with any questions that's coming through. Alternatively, just stop me, uh, maybe put your hand up so I can see if you want to. So the 28th Insight Awards, taking a moment to look back. It's really exciting. You know, we, we're talking about um, recognising the like of, likes of Derek, Gerard um, as the achiever of the year and you know how he's really started the company um, and taken green sense to ooh, apologies to a really high level um, and to contribute and give back because that's what the achiever award is about it's actually about someone that is has given back to um, the ICT community Rob Nathan I don't know who of you don't know Rob Nathan, but he's a very humble person. Um, but certainly in terms of being an entrepreneur, he, that's in his, you know, um, part of his, his makeup. Um, and it certainly is in terms of the giving back to the startup community, to the growth community. And in terms of the Dr. Mel Bryce um, WA Tech Company of the Year, you know, last year was really quite amazing to be able to recognize the Royal Flying Doctors for the work that they're doing. And, and you would think that, you know, a plane is a plane, but the technology and the innovation that has been going into, um, into, the, into the planes and in terms of the actual remote service that they're delivering is really quite um, impressive. Um, and then if you have a look on the screen, you know, um, hopefully we will see your um, logos up there as well. But there's quite a number of people 
for instance, who's gone. Um, and the UDRU team has now gone to Gala event last year. This year we're going to change it slightly, um, and it may be a um, more of a cocktail or, or a formal function at Parliament House. We're working on it because again we have to work out what works best. But as you can see, there's a broad range, and these is not all the winners. It's just you know as many winners as could um, fit on the table, so or onto the spreadsheet. Now um, you may recognise Greg. Where are you? Are you not out? You're not in that one. I missed you in that photo, apologies, Greg. But so the reason why I actually brought this one in, um, the Insight Awards is not just all about innovation, it's also about the innovators having fun. So last year, for instance, when we had very tight budgets, there was a group of people that decided that they were actually going to create a band. And hopefully, I actually think whatever do we do this year, we will see the group again. I'm sorry, Greg, I thought you were in there, but you must be hiding or the one taking the photo. No, I had to work the room. Ah, uh, as you do, as you do. But we, it's, it's about having fun too. So, because I think that's quite important. So in terms of the future, and that's what I wanted to uh, just talk about. So this particular year, we've got one more person on board. Welcome. Um, so with the 29th Inside Awards, we've actually went into the market. And, and so as a volunteer organisation, we are quite dependent on, on sponsorships. Um, and for the first time ever, we've actually gone, uh, like the stadium, we've given out naming rights. So lateral has been in uh, WA, quite a cornerstone um, ICT company, and they have become our branded naming sponsor. So they have, they have uh, you know, um, managed to snoop that up in front of anyone else. But so for, for this year, it will be known as the, the 29th Lateral Insight Awards. Um, and that even for us is actually a new part of a new future. So um, Greg, anything that you wanted to talk about that just quickly? Uh, no, not particularly. You're doing a sterling job. I'm quite happy sitting back and listening. Oh, okay, good. So as I said, you know, we'll, we're working through how the branding's changing, but it's really about also keeping keeping on top of what is happening so that we are able to actually continue to uh, run the Inside Awards. So for, for the 29th um, Lateral Inside Awards, there are a number of key dates and it's important that you actually bring this into your calendar uh, now because some of it we can and, and may move and others we can't move. Um, so the closing date uh, for entries is the 27th of February. Um, and typically, you know, we Um, and then uh, there's the online judging process that happens as well. Um, and we announced the finalists on the 22nd, oh, the 2nd of April, 2020. Um, it was quite amazing. I think next year will be easy because we, we will be able to write 2020. It's quite interesting to think we're talking about 2020 already. But we'll announce the finalists on the 2nd of April. And then once the finalists are um, announced, we also do... Um, uh, some work with uh, in terms of more briefings and stuff. Uh, but in to put in your calendars is that date of the 30th of April to the 6th of May. Now, depending on how many entries you actually enter in, um, if you only enter into one, it's literally, you know, half an hour or, or an hour out of your time. But just be mindful that typically we have, we actually have 10 categories um, and at that stage, we have at least six judges per category. So there's a lot of, and then there's all these different entrants and stuff. So there's a lot of, of juggling and logistics that we have to handle 
So um, when people are away and they have to try and work it out and we have to try and fit in the judges, it becomes quite hard. So if you can, if you can at least pencil it out, we do normally tell people as soon as possible when we, you know, once uh, the, the finalists are announced, when we plan to have the stuff set up. But it, it does take a bit of logistics. And at this stage, the, um, the gala presentation is on the, can you actually see the date? I can't, Rick, I'm on there. I can minimize it. It's um, supposed to be on the 13th, um, sorry, the ah. in 12th of June, if I could just interrupt you, Celia, but uh, we may have to change that. That date will be made available later right. on. Hello, Sue. Hello. Uh, so, so Sue has joined us. Sue is the, uh, the chair of the Lateral Insider Award. So uh, welcome uh, and uh, feel free to chip in when you need to. So in terms of just a day to remember, one of the first dates to remember is that there is an early bird option. So, um, and that closes on Friday, the 13th of December. Uh, what that allows you is it allows you to pay for your submission, but you don't have to finish your submission. But there is a bit of discount. And um, for, you know, when, when money, money matters, a little bit of discount helps everybody. In phase one, we will also have more webinars, probably, um, and uh, as well in phase two. But in terms of the key dates to remember, the 27th of Feb um, is the one, the first one. Um, and then make sure that you're available on the 2nd of April for the function that we have and the gala presentation. These dates are, sometimes we have to move it a week or, a, you know, it depends on whether the minister is available or not. So um, it's not always uh, possible to, to manage it. Oh, sorry, so I'm just trying to... Oops. Uh, so whilst, whilst you're looking, we are planning uh, something special this next year for the gala presentation dinner, which is why we may need to be flexible about the date. So um, stay tuned, it's a big surprise. We're trying to uh, keep ourselves ahead of the, the curve. So um, in terms of the, um, as I said, just those dates, if you jot them down, it's just a, a slightly different ver variation of it. Um, there will be more submission uh, briefings as well in the new year. But again, we're working out whether we do them face-to-face -face or webinars. Um, but there will be uh, more information. So in terms of the, the fees, uh, is the startup category is $160 plus GST. All other categories is $375 plus GST. And then there is an early bird option. So that's 13th of December. And student uh, students, the WA Tech Company, PSE and Achiever categories do not have a fee. Um, students, firstly, because we recognize that you know, $300 uh, probably covers their food for a month about. But uh, the other categories are honorary categories where we recognize and we don't necessarily um, have finalists, but we have a winner. Oh, thank you, Celia, um, okay. for the uh, <laughs> question without notice. Uh, yeah, so um, it, it's not, we aren't a program, we are an awards, but what we do, what we found in the past is that most of the entrants get as much value out of the process of entering as they do from any award that they might win. And the reason why is because we give you a lot of coaching. Um, and so we've got the pitch fest at um, the finalists function, which helps people practice a, a gaddy pitch, which is nutshelling the value proposition in your product in one minute. And um, I think the um, Jody and Alison will, can tell you how challenging that is. Um, we also provide social media coaching 
and we provide coaching for the winners and the merits who are going through to the I awards and also to a picta. Um, and uh, those people who take up that coaching typically do very well. Um, they typically pick something up as as a prize over there. So it's worth considering if you get to that level. Um, also, 75% of um, people who've entered in the past have talked about how it's their product and made others more aware and it's put them on the map. And we've had a lot of winners who've gone through to a PICTA and the I Awards talk about how they used to try and reach investors and now investors reach them. So it's definitely a worthwhile process, even if you don't win, because it... Uh, helps you understand your product a lot better from a marketing and um, sales perspective. So that's my two cents worth. Back to you, Celia. Um, and I think the, um, the other bit that's uh, also on there or not on there is the fact that you get a panel of judges who are experts in the industry um, and you get an independent, independent opinion. So as the chief judge, I get to see, especially in the judging week, I get to see um, most of the presentations. And, and I've seen on numerous occasions when in the 10 minutes when it's question time, uh, where a judge asks a question and it, you could actually see the light bulb go on. And then with the coaching afterwards, that people start to actually understand what is the real problem that they're solving as opposed to what they thought the real problem was. So even for that opportunity, it is it's very seldom that you would get, uh, you know, for 300 and something dollars, an opportunity to test your idea and your concept um, in a relatively safe space. So um, it's been really, it's really interesting to see how people's perception and understanding of what they do and why they're doing it changes because of the, um, the inside awards. So, um, Another reason why is, um, we, you know, we had uh, the, the Minister of Everything, um, as um, I think most of us prefer to refer to, is uh, the Honourable Dave Kelly. You know, he said that it actually helps to solidify WA's reputation for producing ingenious, innovative solutions. Um, and that the in impressive innovations that's been seen through the Inside Awards demonstrate, you know, how we can create new opportunities and future jobs and, and opportunities for WA. Um, and it's, I think it's, it is, again, when we talk about the fact that um, the Inside Awards, the Lateral Inside Awards, is a volunteer organisation and it is run by people. Awards as well as the I Awards, um, and it was quite interesting to see. Um, and I've taken Josephine's comments actually from um, LinkedIn, so she had gone quite public to to talk about, you know, it's a fantastic platform for connectivity, um, and that that it um, the minimum five touch points um, with you know each potential investor, partner, and collaborator. Um, and I think it's the other bit is that it actually gives you a platform to act, to talk to the likes of the minister, uh, which you wouldn't necessarily get in any other uh, situation. So with the categories, um, we did quite a bit of work and um, because we always question uh, at the end of the year what worked well, what hasn't worked well. Um, and it certainly isn't always that easy to actually come up with um, the answers because we do want to showcase innovation and we do want to showcase um, or recognize excellence. So the one we've done was this year and Sue had actually done quite a stellar job because uh, she often doesn't sleep at night. She starts to create these things and um, had looked at, she'd done some real, real intensive research on what's out in the market, what typically is in the market, um, but also how do we make a difference in, in the market itself? And so there's a number of categories that we kept uh, because we also provide these pathways to 
the I awards and the Epicto awards. So we always have to think that whatever we do here in WA, how we do provide the, the, the pathway. Um, so if I almost start from the bottom up, the categories that we haven't changed, it's been around and they will remain around. Here's the Achiever of the Year, the PSC Entrepreneur, WA Entrepreneur, the Dr. Mel Bryce WA Tech Company of the Year. So those three are what we call honorary awards where we where it's about really finding the people and the companies who've made a difference um, in WA. Startup of the Year has been one of the ones where um, when we talk about you know, investors and touch points has been really core to the success of many of the WA companies. Um, Huge have been a, a classic example of that. Uh, and we also want to recognize the students because there are a number of student categories uh, in the I Awards and Epicta. Um, and then the research and innovation. So research and innovation for us covers both postgraduate graduates and industry. Um, but when we look at the first four, uh, uh, it's really where we wanted to have a look at, you know, there's so much happening in terms of communities, in terms of social impact, how we make, you know, it better for humankind. Um, and we typically, we had a, a category on, in terms of government, which was, you know, best government solution. But for many governments, um, innovation is, is core and it's key for, you know, improving how, um, you best spend taxpayers' money because taxpayers are becoming quite vocal. Um, if we see, you know, poor uh, Scott Morrison and uh, all the protests that happens, you know, with the school children. Um, so, because governments are being held to task, so solutions that are, are being delivered either for government, innovating government, or by government, and then transformative business solution. Um, which is also one where we've we've managed to uncover quite a number of um, exciting um, innovations and uh, innovators. So I'll run through each of them and just give you a broad outline of what it is. Um, so the smarter communities is uh, one where uh, we recognize and celebrate outstanding digital and technological solutions created or based in WA. So that is quite important for all of the categories is that it is something that is WA based, based born and bred um, or a significant um, shareholding here in WA. Um, and it needs to demonstrate that it enables, improves and sustains smarter communities. Um, and there's a lot of work that's been done out there in terms of world-class visions, new communities. But I think sometimes places such as WA does actually make it quite hard because we are quite isolated. So how do we combine these world-class visions, strategies to achieve economic, social and cultural improvements um, whilst integrating it with digital and technological projects, products, uh, services and solutions that will deliver a smarter, better connected community. Because overall, when we look at where people are typically, um, in, there's a lot more mental health issues, for instance, there's a lot more isolation. Um, and it happens because, you know, we've, because of technology. So we actually have to use technology um, in a way or find that the innovators who can get people to remain connected. So if you want to add anything, please just feel free, chip in. But for now, you can just continue as well. So, but uh, it's just please feel free to to chip in. So, social impact um, is uh, is again, it's a, a digital technological or technology solution that is created or based in WA that best improves man mankind's health, welfare, education, and deliver and or deliver positive social impact. The real focus here for us is breaking down the barriers to health education, social impact, and or entertainment. So as you would see with some of these categories is we, we've not, we've, we've moved away from talking about, you know, whether it's an environmental, um, social impact, it, it can be anything, but it is focused on breaking down the barriers and improving mankind, um, you know, health, uh, welfare, uh,
you know, ever since we've had the pleasure of having, having had the ambassador of Estonia as our keynote speaker two years ago, um, it's certainly one that, that um, is, you know, on the forefront for all governments. Uh, if governments do not innovate, uh, it actually does not deliver the outcomes because the requirements on governments are so much more and the taxpayers' money is, you know, getting so much less. So it would be really interesting to see uh, the, the solutions, the, the digital ICT solutions that are created whereby we innovate government and we provide improved government service delivery um, by also reducing internal costs because again as uh, you know there's there's less funding and there's a bigger need for it to provide better services to the public the citizens communities in in an innovative way um, then transformative business solution this is one that is always very well, well although it's new um, it's it's similar to one that we've had um, in the past, but it's really actually about finding those business solutions that are created here in the backyard of WA, where people um, either develop smarter processes and, and business solutions uh, that that results in um, transforming business. Um, because again, when we talk about not just WA, but but especially in WA, uh, to remain um, competitive and to achieve the level of, of, of innovation and competitive productivity that's needed, uh, it is quite a, a challenging task. It's quite an exciting category typically because here we see in the last year, for instance, we had Bank West in here. We've had um, such interesting uh, designs and um, innovative solutions come through. So it's always quite an interesting category to see. So the students, uh, it's a it's a student product or project, um, and it's again it's it's good to see because um, over in many of the other states, I think there are a bit more opportunity for students to showcase what they're doing. But this one is specifically focused on undergraduate students. Um, it's been done uh, by a group of students or or uh, just one student. So it is again one where. Um, we have really done very well in the past uh, with the likes of Jared Wimbridge, uh, who has gone on, and I see actually Jared is now in the Digital Disruptors um, as a finalist as well this year. So research and innovation. So research and innovation for us um, covers both postgraduate tertiary students as well as uh, industry. What we typically do here, it's about you know, finding those novel new to market services or products um, or improvements to existing services and products. But it is really one um, where we work, uh, we, we typically announce a uh, postgraduate uh, winner, at least, um, and a, a merit if uh, there is merit in it, but we also look at what industry is doing. Um, and again, we've, we've, we've done so well in the I Awards and a picture with the development uh, that's been happening. For instance, Noisy Guts uh, has been one of those classic examples. Startup of the Year is really looking at... Uh, Noisy Guts is also going to di digital disruptors. Yeah. You yeah. can't actually get a budget for... for um, a, well, we're going to Picta, but she's going to no uh, digital disruptors instead. Oh, okay. Yeah, Picta takes a bit more out of the budget than going to uh, to Melbourne, so um, <laughs> it, it it sometimes makes it easier. Um, thank you, Bruce, and welcome, Bruce. So Bruce is the uh, the chair of the uh, judging uh, subcommittee, so uh, um, also on um, making sure that you know we have the right diligence and probity in the process. Um, so startup of the year is really focused on early stage commercialization, uh, high growth, high risk ventures, um, looking to find where we, we can find the scalable business, businesses. Um, there are some requirements that uh, the business has to be registered um, after the 1st of January 2017. So it has to be um, in sort of its third year maximum uh, to, to uh, qualify for uh, this category. 
and the founder and all product developers must still have a significant shareholding uh, in the company. And it must not just be a subsidiary that's being created. It is not a spin-off. It's a true, you know, we really love those startups that come through having started up in, you know, the garage. Um, and, um, you know, it's taken a few years to, to develop. Dr. Mel Bryce, uh, WA Tech Company of the Year. Uh, where I would think, uh, Sue, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but WA is really the only state where we're the first to recognize existing companies, uh, technology companies who decided to not uh, leave the state, but to remain and have a presence in the state and contribute uh, back to the state. It's, it's not easy. It's actually quite easier to, you know, to find venture capital over east or um, overseas. So due diligence to make sure that, uh, that the, the companies are true WA companies. Um, you need to demonstrate a minimum five years trading history. We don't go high on the revenue, but what we've found in the past is that revenue, there's actually been quite significant revenue and they must have technology as a key point of differentiation for their business. So we're not looking at consultants con uh, developing uh, solutions for others. We've, we're really looking for the true WA tech companies. Um, and we, we are fortunate that um, after the passing of Dr. Mel Bryce, that um, his widow allowed us to use his name and therefore actually also recognize not just the companies who, who but also the people who have really made a difference uh, in terms of contributing back to WA. PSC, WA um, Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, is also where we actually we recognize those real entrepreneurs who uh, take many risks, um, but also who inspire um, the, the uh, ICT industry. Um, it, we do this in conjunction with the PSC Foundation, uh, where once you become a WA Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, there is then a national um, award as well. Um, and Achiever of the Year, that is, is where it's not necessarily, doesn't um, have to be someone that's been an entrepreneur as such, but it is an individual that inspires um, and that, that keeps us, uh, you know, uh, striving to do more uh, in terms of, of growing the innovation and the innovation community in WA. Uh, Sue, Greg, Bruce, any other comments? Uh, Sue, maybe just anything on the, the four new categories on your end? And I'm not hoping to put you on a tight spot, but... Um, no, no, I can't add to that. Thanks, Celia. Okay, cool. Bruce and Greg, you're good? Yeah, I've got nothing to add. Okay, thank you. So there are pathways, and that's one of the other reasons why we're actually quite um, happy to have the, you know, the Inside Awards continue. And it's one of the main reasons why we want, because we create a pathway um, that isn't that easy for people typically otherwise. So with the, with the natural Inside Awards, uh, it opens up the opportunity to either join through the PSC, through the I Awards, um, and then the digital disruptors, and also to move forward into a picture. Um, it's really, um, maybe it's still the competitive spirit in my, um, in my bones, but I love it when we actually um, do very well, both at the I Awards and the digital disruptors. I remember when I went, um, it wasn't last, yeah, it was last year when I went, um, WA's name came up in the, w, in the digital disruptors awards so often, and people were like, what? Where are these people from? So um, it is such a great opportunity, and it and it it serves it shows that we do what we're meant to be doing is we are recognizing and promoting uh, the innovation in WA. 
Their categories are um, slightly more complicated. I think we have some simpler ideas. They have cross, they have core categories and cross categories. So what we end up doing is um, when you enter, for instance, uh, we don't necessarily always know where you're gonna land. So, um, but there are consumer markets, uh, industrial primary, you know, core markets. Um, they have cross-stage categories. It makes it actually quite hard. I must say, um, I know all of us uh, from the management committee who are on this call do the judging. Um, their judging is quite complicated in that stage because some people choose to go on a cross-stage uh, for the other states and the startup. Um, but we end up mapping, so it's one of the things, once you actually become a winner or a merit award winner, you actually go into the I Awards as a finalist. Um, and we do the mapping uh, around that. And, and sometimes you may, for instance, have gone into the most transformative category, but we end up putting the same research because we think that's where we've got a better chance of doing well. Um, our guys also have an opportunity to join the, the disruptors. Um, and what's quite good about that is um, we have an arrangement with uh, the disruptors, uh, the digital disruptors, where once you've actually put your online submission in through award force, um, as you will do, uh, they take that submission and they then transfer it into the digital disruptors and you can then go and make it better. But it's, it's actually saves, I think, a lot of people time um, and a lot of effort to refine and make it better, but you don't have to do something from scratch. So with the digital disruptors, um, we, again, we push as many um, entries through and you can always then go and say, well, no, we don't want to do. Uh, sometimes if um, in some of the categories, uh, we, we can only allow an, a certain number of people to go through as, um, as winners and, and, as, and finalists, but we would actually recognize where someone was in that and we have a number of uh, finalists in all of these categories from uh, WA. The Digital Disruptors is soon... Um, yes. The Digital Disruptors is on Wednesday the 4th I think it is, or maybe 5th of December, it's certainly that Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. the 5th. Um, it's preceded by a uh, conference all day. But yeah. It's, it's, it's Wednesday the 4th. Melbourne. Um, it's quite, it was quite interesting last year to see how the, um, it used to be in Sydney and then last year it was in Melbourne. So to see the interstate politics um, is, is quite interesting always as well. So how do we enter? Um, I'm not going to tell you how to suck eggs, but um, there is the link in terms of how you enter. It's, it, you go through the website and it's really, really easy. You go, you register, um, and it will take you to award fours and you will basically pick one of the categories. Um, and then it's just a step-by-step. -step. We, we looked at what we've, uh, you know, what we need to complete. Uh, we review that every year. So it is fairly simple to be able to complete. You have to have a look if something is marked mandatory, uh, you have to give, put in some words unless it's optional. Um, you don't have to put in team members. So you don't have to have team members either. So but where it is a joint submission, you can, the award force manages that as well. You do have to note that there are some word limits because we also don't want to make it too hard and too lengthy. Uh, but sometimes a, a lot of people put a lot of words in, but they actually don't answer the question. So um, the, the limits aren't extensive, but it's really focused on how you answer the question and set yourself apart uh, then from some from the rest of the uh, uh, the competition, there is guidance provided, and then we also have media and public relations information. I think that's another part that we really want to work on is how we can showcase uh, the WA companies. So there are you can you can start the um, entry and then save it for later. You can save and close. You can preview and you can submit. Um, again, when we talk about the early bird, 
you can pay and save in Next, um, but only have to close uh, or submit closer to the time. So just coming back to those important dates, the entry deadline, because each of the categories have their own um, requirements and the requirements may be the same but the, you need to think about you know if we talk about social impact is not the same necessarily as most transformative business um, and if you do there are more information on the website in terms of um, you know a lot of questions and how to enter and if nothing else uh, you can talk to any one of us uh, to to um, answer any queries for you. So it's important with your written submission that you directly address all the criteria. It is not a, um, uh, it's not a, it's not a publicity stunt. It is, we ask those questions because we really want to work out where the, you know, where the innovation is. And um, what is quite important, a lot of people, again, um, put in a lot of information, but they don't think about, you know, what is, the social impact or what is the most transformative business solution. Um, sometimes we see quite a lot of um, advertising, typical uh, promotional material, but it doesn't answer the questions. Um, and although Perth is a small, you know, the state is relatively big, but the place is relatively small, you can't assume that the judges know your business because in actual fact, if a judge knows your business, they will not be judging your um, category. So because we deal with uh, conflict of interest, it's important to back up your statements with some real clear examples. So, you, you know, talk about, um, we went out, we were looking to gain 17% of the market and we found that, you know, or 17% of people have an issue. Um, and this is what we're working towards. Uh, so that you, if you're very clear with your examples, people can get to understand what you're talking about. And it's always important to remember that you are part of a competition. It is, it's, it's there to showcase what is excellence, but it is for you to demonstrate that excellence. So once you've done it, is step away from it. Get someone to have a look at it and say, okay, what makes you different? Why, why, why should, should the judges pick you? Think about the testimonials, think about the case studies, and be careful with your referee selection. Referees need to be independent, but because our lead judges do check on the referees and they need to be available. Many entries have nearly gone, you know, have, have nearly not con uh, continued because we couldn't find the referees. So with the, um, with the categories and specifically with the new categories, what we've tried to do is um, with the, uh, the I awards, we also map the categories against the I awards. And in the I awards, they basically look at why, what, and how. Um, what we want to look at is we want to look at why, and we see that as the problem. Uh, what we see is the solution and the how is how you actually match the problem and the solution. How have you fixed the problem? As such, and then we want to see what is unique and how you're to with the solution that you presented. Um, and so we, we're trying to make it quite simple, uh, especially with the new categories. The other categories have got, you know, startup, for instance, has got its typical um, business, you know, what is the, the business case behind it, uh, where is the benefit, where is the innovation. But if you can think about these criteria from this perspective, um, that is what you will be answering. There are five golden rules. And the first three are the same. Address the criteria. Um, as I said before, a lot of people do not address the criteria. So you don't actually know what is the problem. Um, and even if you could work out roughly what the problem is, because remember our judges are, are from, the, from industry, you don't necessarily understand the problem or you don't know how that that solution stands out from the rest. Why is it excellent? Why is, where's the innovation? Um, 
And then one thing is, as you know, so think about how you stand out in terms of the category, but then also remember winning starts was a real punchy title. We've had some really boring titles and I, maybe I shouldn't call them boring, but they did not actually describe with the innovation. They did not describe what sets you apart. It, it's so do think about what your title is, that it is really, um, um, uh, very specific um, and it and in it's that 20 words or not even 20 words five words ten words that that tells people exactly what it is that you're trying to solve and um, with referees we need your referees to be independent um, and that is often people go well I'm just going to quote on my project sponsor or my my you know chairperson no that cannot be because it needs to be someone that's independent um, it has to um, be someone that um, under, that has dealt with you, that, you know, it could be someone where you've actually solved a problem. Um, it, you need to look at, for instance, end users. And for students, we do look, we do a look at people that are, um, uh, allow them to have some uh, super, supervisory staff uh, to support um, them with their submission. Uh, so any, Bruce, Sue, Greg, anything to add on this bit? Well, the only thing I want to reinforce are the first three golden rules. Being a judge both here and the I Awards, too often do I see um, innovations coming up, but they don't get past the first stage because they haven't addressed the criteria. And as judges, we can only judge against those criteria. really about um, thinking that beyond that final is what happens. So life after stage one is, you know, should you be a finalist and you've broken through, um, what we want to do is we want you to be able to, or to help you. So uh, for the finalists, we do deliver a specific finalist briefing. Um, and it's normally run by Sue and myself. Uh, we talk you through the process of uh, the face-to-face, -face. but uh, we also talk to you about how do you stand out then in terms of the face-to-face -face presentation. Um, we always recommend that people participate in this because it is really important that you do participate. Um, because we've seen where people attend these webinars, they attend the presentations, it really makes a difference. So just in, into the face-to-face, -face, so you can start to think about where we're going, is it's a it's basically a, um, a 40 minute exercise all up. You've got five minutes to set up. You've got 20 minutes um, presentation time, 10 minutes with, uh, for questions and answers with the judging panel, um, and then five minutes to uh, pack up and uh, leave the room. And then afterwards, you get to talk to the scribes. So we get some media information from you. We get your, um, but the, for, Typically, the people who have stuck to at least their 20 minutes or even a bit less than their 20 minutes and allowed that 10 minute time of judging uh, or, or question from the judges have found to, I think, the, the biggest benefit out of this whole process. Because as I said before, is you've got six, potentially six judges, five to six judges in the room who have been in industry, who have, who, who have dealt with the kind of problems that you are dealing with. And as I said before, is the light bulb goes on so many times um, and it's really it's quite enlightening to see uh, pardon the pun um, how well it helps those 10 minutes so the people typically who use up 30 minutes to present if you cannot present within 18 minutes what you're doing you typically do not fare well um, and then we do provide support there's there's a bit less support in the first online phase because it is you know uh, the bit where the questions are a bit more simple and we want you to focus on what you're doing. Um, we do provide some support in terms of, um, there are some help, you know, if you need to be able to find someone where um, we can point you in the direction of having someone at least look at your present, uh, at your, um, your entry, your online entry. Um, but once you've got become a finalist, we do provide some um, uh, web or uh, presentations on that. 
but also Robin Mustafa last year did. social media um, um, uh, presentations and, and workshops with people because we do find that people need to understand how to market their brand uh, better. Um, and then once you become a winner or a merit award, we actually do the, the coaching, um, pitching sessions for, um, for the merit awards and the winners. And we do it for a picture as well. And again, it's, it's, we see where people, you know, people can do well, but they do a little bit better when we've actually done the coaching. Um, Sue, you agree? Absolutely. When we coach, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we ask why and no, you're not making sense. And don't you think so? Uh, um, and it's really quite good to, to see then when people um, do their final pitch and they do so well at the I awards and the digital disruptors. So go WA. Um, so in terms of the further awards, uh, so the, the judging time there is, uh, the, the competition is more fierce. You know, if you go to the I awards, it becomes a national award. If you go to a picture, it becomes an international award. Um, and where you would have 20 minutes presentation time in WA for the first round um, at the, the picture and at the I awards, you only have the 10. So the criteria may be slightly different, but we've actually done quite a bit of work to align the criteria. And because we think that will even help our entrants more. Um, and as I said, go WA, nothing wrong with us winning. Um, so that is all from me. Is, are there any questions from uh, anyone? Remember to unmute your mic before you ask the question. And thank you, Celia. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Celia, I haven't got a question, but I just want to say thanks very much for making it very clear and concise. Uh, I think I have a much better understanding of the Inside Awards following the last 55 minutes, so thanks for that. <laughs> that's not concise, that's a bit longer. <laughs> well, it's over your 20 minutes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the first well, um, It's uh, Daryl here. I uh, don't have a question either, but I just wanted to... Um, say, uh, having been at the I Awards final this year, how wonderfully well represented uh, WA was in the um, award recipients. So just goes to show that uh, getting into these awards um, really does give you an opportunity to put yourself up on a national stage. Especially if you go out to dinner with the West Australian contingent. Absolutely. Uh, I think we get remembered maybe for not always the right reason. So I say it again. I'm dropping out in it here. innovative and exciting uh, yeah. idea and, and technology that we could promote. Yeah, um, I think it's, uh, we, I would suggest that you, uh, you run the one minute pitch fest locally, because if someone can, and, and you should ask uh, the froggy ladies, because they did the one minute pitch. It's amazing when, what people can tell you in the one minute pitch. If you put, if you put the challenge out to the guys to pitch, in one minute what they're doing and what the problem is that they're solving i think you'll be amazed how how many entries you may want to enter so um yes we look forward to uh, to seeing that uh, very much any questions from anyone else or we can wrap it up because i know i have a long 20 minutes apparently so um would be good to uh, to get uh, this one wrapped up too So if no one has any questions, uh, again, just thank you to the committee members and thank you to Greg again for taking care of the recording.
um, and for you guys who have joined uh, for the webinar. Um, really excited and looking forward to seeing your entries. Um, and if you have any questions, um, please contact, uh, feel free to contact me um, or Bruce or Sue or Greg. Uh, we are here to help. And I wish you a, a happy rest of the afternoon. Have a good evening. Thanks, Celia. Thanks, Celia. Thank you. Thanks, Celia. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ball boys. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. <laughs>